Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to St. Hilary Church. Thanks for being here with us today to commemorate the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ on Good Friday. Um, so, as we've mentioned before, we will the first hour will be a pre-recorded presentation of the Stations of the Cross. It was recorded by our school students in cooperation with our amazing choir who pre-recorded um, the music in between each of the stations. And so you'll be watching that on our um, monitor here in the church. It will also be live streamed at home. So thank you for joining us. After the first hour, we will need to ask you to exit the church so that we can clean the pews. Um, and then that'll take about 10 minutes and then we'll, ask, then we'll invite you back in. I'm sorry about that, but it's the only way we could um, make sure that we comply with the um, regulations in place because of COVID-19. Um, and at this moment, we'll take up a short collection. We will take up a collection. We'll take a short moment to take up a collection for the Holy Land. All the money that is donated today uh, in all the churches around the world go to support the religious sites in the Holy Land. So thank you for your generosity. And our presentation will begin momentarily. The Stations of the Cross is a classic Christian meditation on the last moments of Jesus' life, representing Jesus' journey from the time he was sentenced to death to the time his body was laid in the tomb. The Stations of the Cross draws us closer to Jesus as we reflect on the love he poured out through us through suffering and dying. Well, this prayer has depth and power that still resonates today. It can show us that we are not bystanders in this historical event, but we need to find ourselves in the story. Do you see yourself as Simon? Can you relate to Veronica? Do you feel crushed by the weight of your own struggles? Find yourself. The stations can show you that you are not alone. Whether you feel like you're falling or on top of mountains, Jesus is there with love so strong he can carry the burden of the cross. So come with us as we journey through the stations of the cross. Station 1. Jesus is condemned to death. Pilate asked him, Are you a king then? 
Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this one purpose, to speak about the truth. John chapter 18, line 37. Jesus was not intimidated by Pilate's power in the lives of the people. Jesus had spent his life standing up for the truth and justice. He wasn't going to stop now. It is nerve-wracking when I am called to stand up for what is right. It is tempting to say nothing, especially if mine is a lone voice. But if I fail to speak out, I feel uneasy because I know I am not being true to myself, to the person God calls me to be. Lord, help me to remember that when I stand up for fairness and truth, I am never alone. You are before me and beside me, strengthening me always. Jesus Second station, Jesus takes up his cross. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. MT 2731. Jesus was not used to be pointing at. He didn't act like the other people. He didn't fit in. He was different. But many had admired Jesus' new teaching. Now things were beginning to change. In just a few hours, Jesus was mocked and rejected by almost everyone. It is a terrible feeling to be mocked and rejected. It eats away at my self-worth. I doubt myself and ask, what's wrong with me? But often, the answer lies not within me, but with the offender. Lord, when I am mocked or bullied, help me to seek, to understand, and to forgive so I might never fall into the trap of bullying others in return. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. Even youths grow tired and weary and young people stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 30 through 31. It must have taken a while for Jesus to adjust to the weight of the rough wooden cross. His first steps would have been unsure, made worse by the push and shove of the jeering onlookers. Without help, he was bound to fall. 
Whenever I enter a new stage of life, it takes a while to adjust. Starting a new school, moving to a new area, growing into adulthood. It's easy to stumble as I try to work out where I fit and whom I can trust. Lord, guide my steps as I journey through life. When I stumble and fall, may I always remember that you are ready to pick me up and encourage me to walk tall. Station 4. Jesus Meets His Mother God sent the angel Gabriel to a young woman named Mary. The angel said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. You will give birth to a son and name him Jesus. He will be great and called the Son of the Most High God. Luke chapter 1 verses 26-33 through 33. The words of the angel must seem like a distant memory for Mary. Her hopes for her son now appeared dashed as he sees Jesus in pain, dejected and humiliated. Since his birth, she had cared for him. Now, as he carries his cross, she can do no more than watch. It can be difficult for my family to watch as I become more independent and struggle with life's challenges. They worry I might make the wrong choices. Sometimes this hurts all of us, but I know that Whatever happens, they love me and want the best for me. Lord, remind me that love costs and to value it above all things. Foster in me a loving, grateful, and humble heart, ready to listen and to grow. Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. As the soldiers led Jesus, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him, and was made him carry it behind Jesus. Luke chapter 23, line 26. Simon didn't want to get involved. He was just trying to pass through the crowd and get on with his day but he was picked out and forced in helping. He did, 
and it changed his life forever. Sometimes I turn away when asked to help. I feel there is little I can offer, or I'm afraid I'll make a fool of myself. But the world is changed by people stepping forward to do whatever they can to share the burden of another. Lord, help me to trust that when others ask for help, my help, they believe I can make a difference. Give me the courage to step forward and get involved. The Sixth Station Veronica wipes Jesus' face. The king will answer them. Amen, I tell you. Whatever you did for one of these brothers and sisters of mine, even the least of these, you did to me. Matthew 25, 40 Little is known of Veronica. All we are told is that she stepped from the angry crowd to wipe Jesus' bloody face. It is often said how brave she must have been to do this, but maybe it was her sense of compassion that was too strong to stop her offering the little, little care she could give. Compassion means I feel the pain of another deep in my heart. It allows me to identify with their struggle. It can cost me tears, make me feel small, yet it can motivate me to step out of my ordinariness to help ease the world's suffering. It is a gift to all. Lord, foster in me a compassionate heart, brave enough to share another's pain, humble enough to shed a tear, big enough to shelter their hopes, ready always to care. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was weary, you helped me find rest. When I was anxious, you calmed all my fears. Now enter. The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We are often troubled, but not crushed. Sometimes in doubt, but never in despair. There are many enemies, but we are never without a friend. And though badly hurt at times, we are never destroyed. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. The wood of the cross and the people's rejection must have weighed heavier and heavier on Jesus' body and heart. It must have been ever harder to go on as he stumbled through the streets of Jerusalem. Sometimes life delivers a series of blows, and I feel as if I can't take any more. It is then that I recognize the value of resilience. Resilience is the ability to recover after setbacks. It is strengthened by faith, and that no matter how low I feel, with God's help, 
I can rise up again. Lord, help me when life is hard, that you never leave me to face my difficulties alone. Help me to see that you work through others, picking me up and restoring my strength. the eighth station of the cross. Jesus meets the woman of Jerusalem. A large crowd of people followed him. Among them were some women who were weeping and wailing for him. Luke chapter 27 verse 23. Amidst the jeering crowd, there was one group of women who refused to turn their back on their friend and teacher, Jesus. But they withstood pressures to deny him or run away. Although it made them outsiders, their faith was steadfast. It can be difficult to live out my faith when the world around me doesn't. I can feel pressure into fitting in by not wanting to stand out. It takes courage to remain faithful to a way of life and to support others as they follow their chosen path. Lord, help me to be faithful to my friends, to my family, to my beliefs. Never let the pressure to fit in prevent me from standing out. Ninth station, Jesus falls for a third time. Our enemies have no reason to glow over us. We have fallen, but we will rise again. We are in darkness now, but the Lord will give us light. Micah 7, 8. Jesus has almost reached us by the end. By his third fall, many will have considered him a failure. How could someone who performed miracles and odd thousands now look so weak and hopeless? The world has always prized successful people, but the lesson over the cross shows that it is human to fail. With God, however, I can't stay down. He lets my failures teach me to be humble, resilient and forgiving, not just of my own errors, but those of others too. Lord, there are so many reasons as to why we fail. Lack of effort, lack of support, lack of belief. Help me give witness to the truth that you there are always fresh starts.
The tenth station. Jesus is struck. The soldiers took Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, and divided his clothes among themselves, throwing dice to see who would get which piece of clothing. Mark chapter 15, verses 22 through 24. After falling under the weight of carrying a criminal's cross, being jeered at and considered a failure, Jesus' dignity is now stripped away further as the soldiers take his clothes and leave him naked. I know I am made in the image of God and that I have an inbuilt dignity that deserves the utmost respect. Sometimes I don't act in a way that is worthy of this. When I don't respect myself by my words and actions, or when I fail to acknowledge that others have their God-given dignities too. Lord, open my eyes and my heart that I can see your image in all around me and give me the courage to stand up for the dignity of every person, including myself. Jesus walked this lonesome valley. He had to walk it by himself. Only Jesus could walk it for him. He had. Eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals. Luke chapter 23, verses 33 to 34. It is difficult to know what caused Jesus the greatest suffering the physical pain of being nailed to the cross or the cruel injustice inflicted on him by others. The cruelty I see in the news and in my community can make me feel sad and confused. How can some people be so mean? Why doesn't God do something? Then I remember he did he made me lord may i never forget that with each kind word and merciful act i help to create a culture of love that counteracts a culture of hate remind me that my love makes a difference
The twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. At about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Mark 15, 34, 37. It is shocking to think that at this, his darkest hour, even Jesus doubted the Father's presence. Shocking too for those gathered to watch. Is this how it ends? Have God and goodness gone? Reflection. It can be unnerving when someone I look up to begins to doubt themselves. I expect them to always be sure, to inspire and guide. Should I now doubt them as well? Or should I remain loyal and help restore their faith? Lord, help me to stay faithful. In the darkest times, when others lose hope, give me the grace to help them find it. The thirteenth station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. A request was put to Pilate by Joseph from Arimathea that he might take away Jesus' body, and Pilate gave permission. So he came and took his body away. John 19, 38. Joseph of Arimathea was a follower of Jesus. Unable to prevent his degrading death, Joseph and a few other loyal followers now do all they can to ensure Jesus is finally treated with dignity and care. It saddens me when cemeteries are vandalized. It suggests that the dead are no longer worthy of respect. But Christ taught us that life is changed when we die, not ended. So I'll continue to pay my respects as best as I can because love and dignity never ends. Lord, may I always pay my respects to those who have died and support those who left grieving through prayer, a visit, and acts of care.
The fourteenth station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. There was in the place where he was crucified a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been laid. And so there, because the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus. John chapter 19 verses 41 through 42. It is apt that Jesus' tomb was located in a garden, a place where the cycle of death and new life is witnessed as the seasons pass. When they laid Jesus in the tomb, his followers had no idea of the new life that was beginning to rise, a life that would change all time. I am so used to seeing suffering and death in our world. The news appears to report nothing else. But the lessons of the cross teaches us to keep our eyes and hearts open for signs of new beginnings. God's love and light are always at work, especially in the darkest times. Lord, open my eyes to notice beauty in the world, kindness in people, love all around me, and your risen sun everywhere. We hope our journey together through the Stations of the Cross was meaningful for you. Let us be reminded that only good can defeat evil, only forgiveness can diminish resentment, and only love can remove all hostility around the world. We can return to this prayerful devotion again and again as a reminder of Jesus' great love for us. May God bless you.
Thank you so much for joining us for that beautiful video presentation put on by our school and our choir. As I mentioned at the beginning, we are going to need to decant decontaminate the pews, so I would invite everyone to please just exit the church for just maybe five or ten minutes while we decontaminate the pews so that others who join us later um, will have a clean place to, to sit. If you're at home, um, we'll discontinue the live stream at now at this point, but we will, the live stream will begin again at one o'clock with the meditations on the seven last words. Thank you again for joining us.